And welcome back to a podcast in space and time. I'm Kendall Coffee, And I'm Holden B. Huffman. And today we are discussing Doctor Who uh, Series 3, Episode 0, The Runaway Bride. What? Where am I? What? What? What is this? What is this place? Where the hell am I? I don't... What? What? <laughs> they, re- they reshot that introduction, by the way. They did. The lighting was um, was different in mm. this one. And the um, acting was different. A Dif- uh, yeah. little bit of different reactions and everything. Yeah, I guess they wanted it to flow more, like, seamlessly into... Um, mm-hmm. Which I get. They they wanted it to work better within the episode, which I get. Yeah. yeah it makes sense that they did, but it's just kind of funny that right. they like just completely reshot it. hmm Um I freaking love Catherine Tate. Catherine Tate is so funny. And she and David Tennant have such good chemistry. Oh, they have the best chemistry. <laughs> yeah, there were there were just like so many really funny interactions, mm-hmm. and um, the scene where they're like on top of the building, um, right? Like chatting, mm-hmm. I thought it was like a really, like I don't know, they just had really nice chemistry there. Mm-hmm. Like they they could do the funny stuff, but they could also do like the serious moments, mm-hmm. and they they just work well together. Mm-hmm. They've also done some plays together as well. Oh, have they? Yeah. Um, hang on. I'm looking at them. Uh, theater. I know they did some Shakespeare. I can't remember. Uh, okay. I think they did Much Ado About Nothing. Mm, yeah. I think, I, think, I think that was it. The first Shakespeare play. Was that the first Shakespeare play? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that was a great show. Oh, yeah. Mm. No, I don't think it was the first Shakespeare play. I thought I read that somewhere. Never mind. Um, yeah, no, they they're great. Um, yeah, and whenever I see, I watch a lot of Doctor Who YouTube reactors. And whenever I see them, and they're like, "Wait, it's the chick from the Office?" Oh, no, listen, <laughs> listen. No, that chick is Donna Noble from Doctor. That is Donna Noble. Excuse you. Hmm. Show Donna Noble some respect, please. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, no, Donna Noble is the greatest. And <sighs> I, I, love her. I will always love her. And we'll get into we talked about I remember we talked about before, I can't remember which episode, but we talked about in the spoiler section in one episode a long time ago. Um people hate Donna. Yeah. And, the the okay the really the reason people hate donna is because they it just came off of rose's departure and we talked about in the doomsday episode of why people are like the way they are over that and we think it's right. ridiculous this just adds to it of why people hate donna i mean she to be fair she does come across as very abrasive especially in this starting episode. out this episode like i mm. think as the episode goes obviously she mellows mm. once she figures out what's happening and like but you know she's thrown headlong into a very weird situation mm. in the middle of her wedding day her reaction is understandable but mm. i also mm. understand why people might have been a little put off at the start mm. but and i'll get into more of that in the spoiler territory yeah there's not really much else i can say without spoilers so yeah yeah so far there was just good great murray goldman was on point as usual murray goldman's score in this episode is is, it was very whimsical yeah and there was like a lot of very like high octane sequences in this one especially there was a there was a big boost in the budget this year yeah, we got a car chase in Doctor Who, which is um, <laughs> a rarity. Would, yeah, I would guess probably a first. Um, I don't know. Uh, no, I think there was there was some in Classic Who because was there they're, they're for an, uh, the third Doctor. Uh, he was banished by the Time Lords. He was sent into exile by the Time Lords on Earth for a period of time. 
and wasn't allowed to leave like he mm-hmm. lost all knowledge of how the TARDIS works they extracted that knowledge from his head and everything so he had a car okay so he he had a few car chases yeah um but yeah the car ch- chase sequence was very good and mm-hmm. the just the effects on the TARDIS were um just top notch um For I mean real. you you could really I mean there were some points in this episode where the effects were a little bit rougher i think they they spent all their budget on the on the chase scene but i mean that scene in particular was very very well done very Mm -hmm. uh i'm in my wedding dress yes you look lovely now come on (laughs) yeah so Um, many good lines in this episode it's just a solid leap from donna in a in a wedding dress like Mm -hmm. Um, just really nailing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw a return in the uh, Scavenger Santa things. Yeah. Um, yeah, we saw those last Christmas, mm-hmm. and we see them again this Christmas. Right, um, and speaking of which, this, uh, this is a much better Christmas episode than last time. Yeah, I enjoyed this one way more. I mean, it, it, just, it was just like, it was entertaining throughout, because mm-hmm. like... Right. When you didn't have the high action happening, you had, you know, funny funny back and forth between um David Donna and Catherine. And, right. And uh um, And then you had the emotional scenes with her. Yeah, like it was a it was such a well balanced episode. Mm-hmm. The um Christmas invasion just didn't quite mm-hmm. it just didn't quite work it, with like yeah. the doctor being gone so much and right. So much of the plot was um, him sleeping. Yeah, just waiting for the doctor to wake up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this was a similar. I mean, there was a similar concept here, but just executed a lot better. Mm-hmm. The doctor took off his jacket. Yeah, that was weird. We haven't really seen Tin without his jacket on. All right, and we don't really. See, I think we see it maybe once more, but. Not many times we see him actually take off that jacket. Yeah. Stop bleeping me. <laughs> you had the wedding reception without me. That was cold. That was cold. Like, I get that they thought that she was maybe playing some kind of joke on them, but even so, it was still kind of... Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you know, you literally didn't care enough that you know yeah. this person you care about disappeared in the middle of her wedding and maybe you should like see if she's okay right um dj who in the house dj who yeah when he started doing the like sonicking the uh speaker system i was afraid we were gonna get like the shock from scanners with the, the head exploding <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, which we kind of did with the with the uh, robot dudes but right also a return from torchwood i i don't remember that yeah i don't i mean i don't remember this episode super well so there was like some things that surprised me again um mm-hmm. but yeah it was it was interesting that they um like it made sense that this underground facility they were using was Torchwood. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a nice little callback. Right. Um, we also got a callback with the uh, the control board that the Slovene used in like yeah in Boomtown. Yeah, that's that was a. It's been a long time since we've seen that. Yeah, that was a very nice callback. Yeah. Um, which is it's funny. I'm just like, I'm like, does the doctor just keep? all the junk he's collected on the TARDIS, like... Oh, yeah. He's just got a room of the TARDIS just full of of junk he's collected from random alien encounters. Listen, it's bigger on the inside. He's got room for it. Yeah. Um, Top ten anime betrayals. Oh, Donna. If only there was someone who loved you. (laughs) You made that joke during it. I'm like, oh, dear Lord. (laughs) I wanted him to say it so badly. <laughs> oh, Lance. Poor Anna. Uh, poor Donna. <laughs> hey, they're both ginger. They are ginger. They both have Anna sounds. <laughs> they were both just betrayed by their true love. 
their fiance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The doctor needs to take a chill pill. The doctor was like, I mean, I get why he was um, not very chill this episode, but um, even so. Yeah. Like, I get it not having good social skills. I totally get that. But yeah, he could have handled it a little. I think he could have handled it a little bit. bit, I think he could have handled it a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, after Lance betrayed her, she was Mm -hmm. going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I did like the scene there that we got with um, showing like the beginning of the Earth. I thought that was cool. Um, And again, like some very nice effects there as well. Well, They got some of it wrong, though. They said billion years. Yeah, we all know the Earth is 6,000 years old. Yeah. (laughs) That's proven in the Bible. Uh, sorry <laughs> let's not let's not go down that road <laughs> yeah. uh, um the actress playing the empress sarah parish or parish i would assume parish yeah she was very campy and i enjoyed it yeah, she was great. Like her whole, like just the campiness of it, and mm-hmm. it was very enjoyable. We were both thinking, yeah, she's definitely done some theater, done some theater stuff. Yeah, I can't find anything on her Wikipedia, which doesn't mean she's not done theater. It just means she hasn't, probably just hasn't done any professionally. Right. Yeah. Um, she's been in a good bit of TV though. Yeah. And I couple- she was in Merlin. Oh, was she? Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> or else I would have mentioned that. Because I know you've watched it. Yeah, she was in Merlin. Yeah, anyway, she was great. Yeah. Um, Very over the top. I, I just, I don't know. There's something about a good, like, over the top Doctor Who villain mm-hmm. that I really enjoy. We were talking about it, though. It would be kind of fun to just have a super chill villain. Just like, what's up, guys? I'm going to take over the Earth. You know, I was thinking, like, what if we kind of just took over the world, you know? Yeah. That'd be pretty chill. I don't know. I was just thinking about it. It'd be very chill, man. It'd be so chill. Like, you could argue Adam Mitchell was chill, but uh, he, wasn't, yeah. he, he wasn't much of a villain. Yeah. He, he was, I wouldn't call him chill. He was just, like, low effort. <laughs> he, was, he was a very low effort villain, and he... Oh, uh, it's true. Um, didn't accomplish much actual villainy. That's fair. That is fair. Uh, hey, we actually got snow and not ash. Yeah, we got we got real snow this time and not exploded spaceship or Sycorax. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I think you need someone to stop you. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean. The doctor says, no, I don't. I'm like, look, Doc, you literally destroyed the Time Lords and the Daleks. Yeah. Because you didn't have someone with you. Yeah. You need someone with you. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah, he's and he's like really not. I mean, you think in a way he's self-aware about it, but in a way he's not um he he doesn't want to admit it yeah he doesn't really want to like confront that part Mm -hmm. of himself at least not yet um but yeah she she kind of read him like a book there Mm -hmm. and i just love david Tennant. i know we already talked about this but i just love david Tennant and Catherine tate so much yeah um I mean, again, great chemistry. And I think, like, mm-hmm. and this is something we'll see more of, but Donna is also just, mm-hmm. like, very, very good at, at reading people and, like, mm-hmm. um, reading the Doctor, in a way. Right. But, yeah. Well, I guess I can mention that one thing since you just said Donna returns, so. Yeah, I think most people know that Donna returns. At this okay, point. then I'll, I'll mention it. And just, um, but the thing is, people still have said they don't like donna even after her after season four with her in it Mm -hmm. 
like I don't understand it. She had one of the best arcs. I, I don't understand it. And people just say they straight up hate Donna. I'm like, because she's crude. I'm like, she gets a lot better in season four, but these are people who have seen it. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just really like Donna and I think everybody should give Donna a chance and yeah, for real, not compare her to other, to others. Cause I it's, think that's, that's a big part of it too. Like people yeah. compare her to. They compare everyone to Rose. Oh, is this Rose? No, this isn't Rose. I don't like this one. And Rose is Rose is Rose. And Rose was like who Rose needed to be. And the other companions were who they yep. needed. And I think yep. like, it's important to, I don't know. It's important to remember that. Cause I, I mean, I do it too. Like I, every once in a while, I'll like, think about a companion and I'm like, well, I didn't like them as good as this other one, but like that's fair. Each companion kind of has they they each companion was there when they needed to be and did what they needed to do. Mm-hmm. And my favorite companions are the ones that don't have don't want to bang the doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got Donna Noble, you got Bill Potts, and you have Graham O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah, any any companions where there's like not any um, sexual tension. Yeah, I find that really refreshing. Um mm. it's funny. Um there's another podcast sort of talking about this recently. Um hmm. Sadie Hawkins Pod, who ah. does like re- reviews of Reliant K songs, but they mm. they were talking about how um like because in Classic Who you didn't really have like the romantic companions. Right. Um but you did and it but that started with the the movie that started with the um it did oh they've been talking about doctor who uh well they they mention every once in a while um, ah nice but yeah cuz they, they were talking about like one of um one of reliant k's albums that kind of like pushed the limits of what the reliant k's music could do um mm. And how after those limits were pushed, then like their next album, it felt a lot more natural. But anyway, like same thing with Doctor Who, like once the movie came mm. out and like they had that, I mean, it was very American. Like it was a, it was a very yeah. Americanized story, mm. but they had that um, romantic relationship mm. with the doctor. Like once that limit was pushed and then mm. we went, we got new who like it right. felt a lot more natural than it would have otherwise. That's true. That's um, fair. And I think like there's almost, I, I think in a way there's almost no closing that Pandora's box at this point. Um, yeah. Like once, I mean, once that was introduced, I think people started to expect it, ex- started to expect something mm-hmm. kind of romantic with the doctor, which the show has pushed back against over the last like over 12 and 13. Yeah. Um, but there was a little bit with 11. Yeah. With both companions, but for the second companion, once he regenerated, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but I'm glad that the show has like started to like, I don't, again, I don't mind the doctor having romantic relationships, but I don't, mm. like, it, it gets old when it's every single companion. Yeah, it really it really does. Um, that's all I've got for the non spoilers territory. Um, same. All righty then, let's dive into some spoilers, shall we? Let's do it. Spoiler warning! Ho ho ho! <laughs> um, so we got our first. <laughs> was it our first mention of Mister Saxon? Yes, it was. Yeah, we got a mention of Mister Saxon. Yeah, Mr. Harold Saxon. And hey, we actually got through the spoiler thing without making the someone someone died joke. <laughs> I, am, know, I am proud of us. I'm proud of us, and I was just going to let it pass, but like... Look, I got to acknowledge that we let it pass, okay? We got to acknowledge that we did not make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to give us a round of applause. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. We uh, first mentioned of Mr. Saxon, which is Harold Saxon. Sax. Harold Saxon. I can't talk today. And um, <laughs> he was secretly the master. Ooh. 
Yeah, classic Who villain. The, the master in disguise. What? Uh, it's more likely than you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. Um. Also, there was no Wilfred in this episode. There wasn't. I noticed that, and it bothered me because Wilfred didn't exist yet <laughs> in the writing. Yeah, he wasn't a character yet, but um, right. Yeah, I was like, "Where is Wilfred? I'm just, I just, I'm just here for Wilfred." All right. Donna, obviously. Yeah, and also Donna's father was in this. Yeah. The thing was, the actor died. Hmm. And you know how Doctor Who is about reusing faces. The only time they got to do it is if it's something important. Right. So they just killed him. They killed the character off screen. Yeah. Um. Yeah, which makes sense. Like mm-hmm. I would. I would. And it, it, I would rather them do that than like recast or mm-hmm. do what movies do now and, you know, bring them in with CGI. Listen, the next Black Panther better, better not be recast. Yeah, there's there's no replacing um, Chadwick. Like, I, I think... I, I don't know because he. I mean, he was he was Black Panther, like it, right. And I, I know Marvel has done this in the past um, with um, specifically black actors. They did it with um, Iron Man with um, Rhodey. Yeah, they did it with Rhodey. Um, but I don't. Who I did don't, they do I, it the second time? I I remember they've only done it for two characters, but only the other one there, was the other one was a uh, Hulk. Oh yeah, they did it with. Um, yeah, Bruce Banner was recast. Right. Um, Please just make Shuri the next Black Panther. I would love a Shuri as Black Panther movie. I think, mm-hmm. and I think like that feels like an appropriate. That mm. feels like an appropriate move. And she's point. next. She's next in line for the throne. So right. Um, yeah, I I just I don't want to see like. A, I don't want them to do what they did with um, the rise of Skywalker and like reuse footage and it just be really awkward. Yep. Cause that was very awkward with Carrie Fisher. It really um, was like, there was some forced humor, which I, I do understand why they had to do it. Yeah. But I didn't like it. I just, I don't know. It always feels kind of inappropriate to me yeah. to um, insert a, an actor into a place that actor was not like it, it feels like, you know, it's just kind of weird. It's like, cause they weren't in that scene. They weren't right. acting that part. Like even mm. if you're re-editing things that they've already filmed, like it, it's still mm. very, right. I don't know. It just, it just feels a little inappropriate. Yeah. They did at least get the family's permission. Before, yeah. So, so I, I am glad they at least got the family permission. Yeah, and at least they didn't do like a rogue one where they yeah. or um Yeah. What was the third Hunger Games Mocking uh, Jay? Oh yeah, uh Mocking Jay Part Two. I can't remember the dude's name, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um his name escapes me at the moment. Yeah, same. Anyway, um Also, if not Shuri, make Mbaku the next Black Panther. That could also work. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's Sorry. a whole that's a whole tangent, but I'm glad that they I'm glad they didn't do that with Doctor Who. And I think like yeah. it's a little easier with that type of character cuz like mm-hmm. nobody was really a, attached. Yeah, you didn't I mean you didn't see much of Donna's father. Right, and, he only had a couple lines. Right. So that was like a fairly easy move to make, but I still mm-hmm. think it was like again, the appropriate move to like just mm-hmm. let the let the character pass off screen. Mhm. Man, um, I was I was just reminded so much of Turn Left of just if that wasn't Donna things would have gone so much differently. Yeah. And like it really impacts like what we've recent we've talked about before of just the importance how Doctor Who really shows the importance of just one person, one singular mm-hmm. regular human being. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's so much of Donna's whole arc is mm-hmm. the importance of her as just a, um, just a normal person. Heck, even the doctor told her she wasn't important. Yeah. Which is funny. Cause later we get the line. Um, I've never met anyone who wasn't important before. Right. Um, from, was that 11? Yeah, that was 11. Yeah. Um, well, he was a new man. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think like I think Tennant has the same philosophy. He just wasn't really thinking at the moment. <laughs> I mean, it is fair. He just said goodbye to Rose. Yeah, he was just way off of his game in this whole episode. Mm-hmm. Um, which is understandable, right? You know, he's he's grieving. Mm-hmm. Donna was grieving. We're all grieving. Everyone's grieving. <laughs> it's 2020, man. It's 2020. <laughs> We're all going through it. Yeah. Um, I have one last spoiler. What about you? Um, yeah, that's all I've got. Okay. This was supposed to be the only episode with Donna. Was it? They did not intend for her to come back. Huh. Interesting. This was a one-off thing. I'm really glad she did. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause like, I mean, her reasoning, I mean, her reasoning made sense. Um, right when she was talking about like you know you you terrify me and like i i was like yeah i get it i get why mm-hmm. she wouldn't want to jump into this right i mean it's like what you said uh, during uh our first season of just um like you would be like hold up doc what decision what what are we doing okay we're here before before i get into the tardis i have questions to ask about time travel yeah. What do I do? What do I don't do? And stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Donna Noble's a lot smarter than people give her credit for. She is. And I'm I'm glad that they brought her back. Um, mm-hmm. And she, Catherine Tate had never heard of the show before. <laughs> uh, I kind of think I I feel like that's um, where they got the jokes of like, great last Christmas, great big spaceship middle of london no i had a hangover because like she's from she's from there yeah and she's never heard of doctor who right like that's like you you live in the usa and you've never heard of superman in a way right it's just unheard of i also feel like I think I think they just like kind of threw her into this episode and like didn't give her a script or anything either. <laughs> they were just oh, like, yeah, they they went Thor Ragnarok on it with her. <laughs> like, okay, okay, Catherine, um, this is what's happening. There's some crazy Santas after you, and you're getting married. She's like, and go for it. What? She's like, what? <laughs> what? They didn't, and they didn't tell David about it, and she just pops yeah. up, and he's like, what? <laughs> what? 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 Well, everyone, I think that's it for today. That is um, all I got. Yeah. Okay. Well, from release date time, this is December 26th. So I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. Hopefully. Th- oh, gosh, Kendall. Mm-hmm. I know we're recording this in advance. Mm-hmm. But. London is screwed this year. Why is that? Think about, think about it. All these things just in, I know it's a fictional show, but all these things happen on Christmas day. London's screwed. This is 2020. <laughs> Add 2020 to the mix. They're screwed. Well, uh, England, I hope you had a good, not disastrous alien filled Christmas. And if you did, we, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And I hope the doctor showed up to yep. fix things. You know, the doctor's just going to show up New Year's Eve and be like, sorry, everyone. Bit late. That was, uh, that was my fault. Um, Took a wrong turn at Rexa kind of Albert. or whatever it's called. I knew I should have taken that toy in Albuquerque. <laughs> With my best bugs buddy impression. Um, yeah, so join us next week when we get to series three episode one smith 
and Jones.